Kia ora guys, Bird here. Welcome to episode 14 of Thorncraft 4 Add-ons. At the moment we're in the nether, I spent today's live stream, the weekly live stream that I do, we pretty much, we got this much done here in the nether. I've got the second uh, wither, well, normal skeleton spawner uh, set up here, and I've also been doing a bit of work on the redstone, getting the glowstone lamps in place. It was actually suggested by you guys during the live stream that the way that we're going to do it is we're going to have water kind of in the walls here, we're going to have it flow out and then there's going to be a central channel in the middle here that flows and goes on down into this pit here and uh, that's where we're going to be and, you know, kill these guys and get weather skeleton skulls for days. <laughs> uh, if I decided to rebuild this thing again, what I definitely do is uh, pick my placement of the spawners a little bit better because I'm going to have to dig out a whole heap of nether rack right here. <laughs> yeah, you can pretty much build this anywhere now that we have the displacement focus. And also, water in the nether, thanks to the displacement focus, so you can do that now, so that's pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and put my armor on. I think I am get a few zombie pigmen. I've also been gathering up some nether shards as well, and the locals aren't too happy about that, are ya? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yes! <laughs> right, let's go back to the base. Got my nether portal kind of in this tiny little pocket that you could very easily overlook. In the little corner of the base right there. Anyway, it's time to head up here uh, to start today's episode off. Oh, <laughs> let's talk about this before we uh, get started with that. So we hit the blaze spawner over here. <laughs> I don't even know why I put it here. Horrible idea. I realized when I went to bed last night, that is the worst idea ever because wood catches fire <laughs> and blazes start fires. So when I logged back in today, uh, I noticed that this had happened. <laughs> So all the wood here on the uh, the crafting island has been uh, burned away and that's actually had some pretty bad effects. We've lost a heap of redstone controlling the pistons. We've lost the magic mirrors underneath so we're not getting anything sent into the alchemy lab at the moment. And we also lost a couple of these relays that were here uh, supplying the actual workbench with these. And that's a spider? What are you... <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> this base is slowly falling apart on us, guys. Slowly falling apart. Anyway, that's that's pretty much today. I need to fix that. I just wanted to uh, show you guys why you shouldn't put blaze spawners right in the middle of your base. Pro tip. Bad idea. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and open up our ender chest wand focus because I've been doing a little bit of work. I said in the last episode... Uh, in a little caption thing that I added in editing that I had not yet been able to find one of these Crimson Cult books. I found one now. <laughs> there it is right in the middle of the thing. Crimson Rites. The book is filled with strange symbols. Click to study it. So this is a vanilla item right off the bat. So we're pretty much going to, for today, for the most part today is going to be about this book and whatever happens when we get it whatever's inside, click to study it. I think the first thing that I want to do with it is go ahead and scan stan it. So let's have a look. Okay, we've got some uh, alienis, cognitio, peria, cantatio, and spiritus. So yeah, for those who are interested, I guess, exclusively in Thormac Tinkerer, well, maybe we'll get something Thormac Tinkerer done related today. Let's just quickly check. Oh, these guys are done, so we'll have a look at that in a little bit. But anyway, let's get back up here. It's going to slide up between the places the blazes broke. Let's go ahead and see what happens when I click this thing. Okay, so there we go. We research completed the Crimson Cold. We got some regular and permanent warp. That's not a good sign. Let's just quickly check the sanity checker. See how that guy's doing. And yeah, we're getting up there. We're getting up there. Almost past that second, uh, second area of the, the sanity checker. Not very good, so... Uh, you can't click that again. Pretty much once you've got it, then that, that's it. It's done. It's it's done its job. See ya. Thanks. Thanks for coming. <laughs> See you next time. So we got the um, we unlocked a new research. So let's go ahead and check this out in the Thorminomicon. Okay. So whereabouts is that research going to be? It looks like it's here in the basic information tab. Oh, hello. That's right there. It was a moderate research. Okay. It was completely hidden from view. It had no idea it was even here. That's kind of cool. So let's go ahead and see what this has to say. The uh, the the, uh, the flavor text is a cautionary tale. Uh, cautionary indeed. Plenty of those crimson cult 
funky dudes have fallen to my sword. I'll go ahead and show you guys some of the armor in a little bit, actually. I've got a whole bunch of that saved up now, but let's go ahead and see what this has to say. Much of this book is written in a spidery and unintelligible script. But what you understand offers some strange insights into the goals of the Crimson Cult. Their origins are shrouded in mystery, but it seems their goal is the perfection of a ritual they refer to as a perotis oculis, opening the eye. What it does is unclear, but you doubt it is anything good. Interestingly though, you think Thaumaturgy might offer the missing pieces they have so long sought. Obviously only a madman would study, would, would pursue this line of study. Insanity, huh? That's just what we happen to be. So he said Thaumaturgy actually, so I just, that seems like a hint to just to quickly have a bit of a shifty around in the Thaumaturgy tab, see if uh, picking this up unlocked anything new and it, hmm. Uh, nothing kind of hidden in the corners. I didn't check the middle though. Let's have a look around. Got the wand folk guy over here. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything new is unlocked in the Thaumaturgy tab. So let's go ahead and check the Eldritch tab out. Perhaps something was added here. Uh, let's have a look around in the corners here too. I know about these two guys that are over here, but I haven't worked out how to unlock those yet. Aha! Something right there. That looks interesting. Yeah, so that's pretty much the new guy right there. We'll go ahead and pick this up. Let's see. I will show them. I will show them all. This is a Forbidden Knowledge Taboo, which is the same level, if I recall, as the uh, E-Core. Yeah, so I guess Taboo is like the max level, if I'm honest. So let's go ahead and pick up some scribing tools and paper and learn about this guy. <laughs> That's kind of cool. But now it's pretty much useless, but it takes forever to get one. I had to raid something like what? How many did I raid? Like six or seven obelisks that had a Crimson Cult members at them. You have to get it off of one of the uh, mage dudes. I think they're called acolytes? I haven't scanned one, so I don't know what they're called, but let's go ahead and pick up that research note. Kind of orangey looking. Awesome stuff. Right, so. Ooh, very small, but plenty of interesting aspects right here. Alienis, Gongetio, Tenebre, Permultatio, and Eter. Righto. So this one connects to Maltus, and we know that Maltus connects to Ordo, so let's try that out to start things off. Put that over there, and let's put, or maybe what I should do, I'm just thinking I could put Peruditio right here, that's a good idea, so I can go something like uh, uh, White Horse right here, Peruditio right there, and then I can do Ordo, and then Motus right there, and then Alienis I believe connects to Ayr, uh, let's see, Alienis, oh no that connects to, dang it. <laughs> Okay, that connects to White Gloss and Tenebrae, so we're going to have to break out of uh, Tenebrae with something else. I should have thought about that. So Tenebrae has made up of looks, okay. So maybe maybe we can kind of wrap around this way, that's a possibility right there. So maybe we'll go uh, uh, looks, and then we'll go Ingis, and then we could put White Gloss right here. Okay, and then White Gloss will have to connect to Ayr, so... Bring the Ayrer along. Okay, there we go, and that's everything connected. Ayrer was the golden ticket right there. Golden ticket in the dirt. So, I'll show them, I'll show them all. Oh man, oh man. This is probably going to be pretty deep, guys. Pretty deep. Are you ready? Alright, we got some more uh, regular and permanent warp out of this. Getting kind of scary there, game. But it looks like uh, we're getting ever closer towards... Whatever the heck these the two things are, let's go ahead and read about. Opening the eye. It was all so simple. You were amazed the Crimson Cultists have never discovered this. To perform the ritual, you simply need to place four eldritch eyes on the specially marked keystones found at one of the strange altars where you first discovered the cult. The sinister node above the keystone must remain intact. Once this is done, it is a simple matter of infusing a large amount of primal vase into the keystone with a wand. A hundred units of each should be sufficient. Right, so, in order to make the Eldritch Eye, it seems to be watching you. 
Ugh, that's kind of scary. <laughs> you need to get yourself an Eye of Ender, as well as a Gold Ingot, and a Void Seed. Okay, and the Void Seeds are made uh, with uh, regular Weed Seeds. Fair enough. Okay, and you're also going to need a whole jar full of Arlianese. Holy crap, that's not an easy stuff to come by. Uh, 16 Eater, Tenebrae, and Wakwal, so those are fairly straightforward, I think, as well. Now you have got the Tenebrae farm, and that's an instability of moderate, which we laugh in the face of at the moment. So you seemingly need to place four Eldritch Eyes. Okay, so we need to make get four of these things if we want to use them in any meaningful way is what it sounds like. So we need four jars and an entire jar full of those. Well, I have a full jar, I think. Although I don't have a full jar of that, but that, that's going to be pretty dang hard to get. If you have done everything right, the ritual should be complete. And the so-called eye would be opened. Of course, you have no idea what that means. No matter... Only fools fear the unknown. Yes, indeed. Okay, then, well, I guess we'll go ahead and busy ourselves about making this thing. Let's just quickly check in the Thormonomicon here what has uh, Arlianese in it. I know that Ender Pearls is you know, pretty much Ender Pearls is all you got. Well, you could use Nether Stars <laughs> if you really wanted to, but no, I think just before I go ahead and cut away, and probably what I'll end, just end up doing is heading to the end and getting a bunch of these, so each of those is about a jar, so we're going to need a whole heap of ender pearls. I need to go and grab some from the end. That'll be the plan. I've got some Crimson Cult armor over here. This is the, uh, that's the suit that the, the knights wear. I think I have the armor from the other dudes as well. Yes, yeah, so I've got this thing, I've got that thing, and I've got the hood somewhere as well. I've got a few hoods somewhere. Uh, where are they? I think they're actually down here in this chest here because I was using my hand mirror to save on inventory space. Here we go. So let's go ahead and put the, or we'll take the sky off. Go ahead and put on the knight's armor first. Oh man. We look like a crimson knight. And we get a cape as well. Very cool. Well, we get this like front, front cape, but also a back cape. Ooh. <laughs> I was sort of walking at the regular vanilla speed right there, I think. Very cool looking. It's got that 3D look to it as well, and the Thorncraft logo on there, of course, looking mighty awesome. And the reason that this is all full durability up is that I actually took this and used my uh, Thormic Restorer, I believe they're called, uh, from the Thormic Tigger Anon, and I repaired it. I've got some Instrumentum dedicated over here now as well. So let's go ahead and put the Crimson Cult Hood on. I haven't scanned these yet. I'll go ahead and do that at some point. Or right now, why not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually put the whole set of this on yet. Wow. Now that actually looks pretty cool too. It's like the Thumbcraft uh, wizard armor. <laughs> it's like a black void. That is pretty sweet too. Now what kind of protection does this armor offer? Let's have a look. It's actually fairly decent. Fairly decent. So if you wanted to run around in this, that would be pretty awesome, I think. I'll go ahead and I'll probably just uh, combine these, to be honest, or maybe I will actually re repair them. We'll see what kind of a chance we can throw on there, but let's just uh, finish up. Oh, there we go. Let's just finish up uh, this section of the video by uh, scanning these. I've scanned that, so it's just those two to go. Let's get my Thormonomicon out. Scan the two of those and have a look. Crimson Cold Hood is uh, sort of that stuff, and that's pretty much the same thing. Slightly different numbers for each, but there you go. That's uh, that's the Crimson Cold Armor. I really do like it. It looks very interesting. Something great to wear, vanity items, you know, that, that kind of good stuff. Man, Minecraft needs a vanity slot. I wonder if there's a mod that does that. All right, then, that's going to be it for this section of the video. I'm going to be right back once I have some Eldritch Eyes, or rather, the materials to make Eldritch Eyes. Welcome back, folks. I've got the necessary essentia and ingredients set up nowsies in the inventory and on the infuser. So I thought I'd just go ahead and do this first infusion for you here on camera, but this thing is not going to take so blooming long to get through. I'm only going to show you the one. <laughs> so we've got the Alienis sitting over here, and I've also got the two extra jars that's so kind of sitting in the middle there. I'll eventually just move those once we use the Essentia up. And I've also got the Spear Essentias from the Ender Pearls set up in the table here. We also had to get a couple more extra Ender Pearls uh, to make the Eyes of Ender, because remember, those take Ender Pearls as well. And you also need to get a little bit of Tenebrae as well, just to uh, top up what we need in the Void Seed Department. Void Seeds, 
they're just they're, they're one of those things that are a little bit harder to get because they take so many interesting different little aspects don't they I mean they've got uh, Arvinis, Tenebrae and Wakwal so you have to kind of burn down three completely different things to get those aspects so they're a little bit hard to come by but you know within a little bit of grinding you know they're, they're easy enough okay, and go the items and that is our very first uh, Eldritch Eye is what they were called, right? It kind of looks a little bit like um, the like the arcane balls from Thorncraft 2, doesn't it? Seems to be watching. Hello. As well as you guys on the YouTube channel. <laughs> anyway, let's get out our scan Stanatron and have a look at what he's got. Okay, a bit of Aldrum in there. Mm, very cool. Sensu, Spiritu, sort of what you'd expect. Anyway, that's the first one of those. I'm going to go ahead and craft up the rest of those guys off camera. Welcome back folks, we're currently flying towards the very first obelisk that we actually discovered here in the LP way back in episode 2 I think, so it's been quite a long time that we've known about this particular obelisk. Uh, it says in the Thormonomicon that you need to go to an obelisk that was previously visited by the Crimson Cult, so I don't know if that means there are other obelisks that are available, uh, um... Well, what am I trying to say? Ah, uh, invalid, I suppose. But anyway, we're here now. So it says, how exactly does it say? It says that we need to place four Eldritch Eyes on the specially marked keystone. I see. So if we go ahead and get our scan Stanatron out, we can see that the there's altars and there's capstones, I see. So, uh... D uh what 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 was the word that it used? It used keystone. We don't actually have any keystones here. We've got altars and that thing, and there are monsters around. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get uh, these four dudes out. And I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to do with them. I think the English translation is probably just try and put them on the altar and see what happens, right? Okay, that's uh that's used it, and it's gone right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this here as well. Right, so if you do that, okay, it's going around this way. <laughs> and the final one, right there, okay. And then it says that you need to get a hundred Vs of each primal aspect and go ahead and do something with that. I'm not sure. I think it's just right click this thing. Right, there we go. Holy crap. What the heck? That's a... It's a some kind of portal. Uh, like a black hole thing, um... <laughs> um... Um... <laughs> Holy crap! So that used up... That used up almost everything. What am I getting charged by? <laughs> Did that not use up everything? I guess it actually followed the discount thing. Oh, that's interesting. So you turns out you don't need a hundred as long as you've got the discount stuff. Well, holy crap. But that's kind of scaring me a little bit. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well guys, we're going to go ahead and investigate whatever the heck this thing is further in the next episode here of Thorncraft 4 add-ons, or should I say Thorncraft 4 with Betros. Uh, we'll go ahead and call it Thorncraft 4 add-ons because new series, Ghost Spirits Blade. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Kia kaha, and I'll see you in the next episode.